Today we're taking a look at section 1.8, um, and we still have a couple more sections even after this, and we're continuing to expand the models that we have access to. So what are the models that we have done so far for data sets? Linear and exponential. There's been two so far. So today we're going to take a look at logarithmic functions. So to start with, we're going to actually talk about what a logarithmic function in general looks like. Now, as you're doing this in your calculator, it will say LN reg. LN stands for what? Do you know? Natural log. Natural log. Very good. So it is a log. It's called the natural log. And the basic equation that your calculator is going to use is f of x equals a plus b natural log x. That's our equation. For logarithmic uh, models, you cannot use inputs that are negative. Okay? Nothing or zero. So we have to have only positive inputs. So when you were asking a question earlier, I think it was you, Hannah, about putting in negative inputs. In general, x can have negative inputs, but on this one it couldn't because these models don't have inputs that are negative. Okay? So we do have that restriction on this one. There's two graphs that we can actually see happen when we have a natural log graph. One option is that the graph looks like this. And the second option is it looks like this. Now, in terms of most of what we do in terms of a business sense, most of ours are going to look like the first one. Think about what you know about profits for a company, costs for a company, revenues for a company. We, we don't want them to do the second graph, right? That would put everything negative. We don't want negative profits. That would be bad. We, we don't want negative revenues. That's like not even possible. And we can't have negative cost. Nobody's going to pay us to take product from them to run our business, right? So most of our logarithmic models are going to look like the first one, just so that you're aware. So a few things about this is that when we're looking at the first graph, the first graph has a B value that's greater than zero. And the B value I'm referencing is this one up here, okay? So the first one has B that is greater than zero. So what do you suppose happens on the second graph? B is less than zero, right? Now what can you tell me about the concavity of each one of these? What's the first graph? It's concave down. It's concave down. And the second one? It's concave up. Easy enough? You've seen these graphs before. May have been a while. We're not going to deal with them too much in the sense of algebra, okay? Um, but we are going to take a look at doing them with modeling. Here's an example. The average yearly consumption of peaches per person based on yearly income when peaches are $1.50 per pound is given by the table. Now, the yearly income is in tens of thousands of dollars, so a one represents one times $10,000. So the first entry in here is somebody who makes $10,000. The second you know, column is somebody who makes $20,000 and so forth. So does it make sense, at least for a while, that if you make more money, you're more likely to buy more peaches? Yeah, I mean, because I'm telling you what, if I'm only making $10,000 a year, I'm probably not buying peaches. I might be buying something different like bread and milk because I just don't have enough money to buy maybe some of the more not crucial things to my life, like peaches. Right? Okay, so for a while, as your income goes up, you're more likely to buy more peaches, according to this information. This says, why is the graph not linear or exponential? So anytime it's asking you why a graph actually fits a data set, you need to look at the data set. So that's what we're doing next. So grab out your calculator, and let's take a look at what happens when we look at the spread of this data set. All right, so um, I've had some conversations with a couple of you recently about when we do and don't change data sets. Um, the only time we change the input for a data set is when it's in years. So if I'm not dealing with years like 1999, stuff like that, then I don't need to worry about changing what's in my data sets. I'm going to enter exactly what the table says. So when I hit stat 
edit and I put these values in my table, I'm going to enter exactly what's on my data set, which is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then on the output I have 5, 6.4, 7.2, 7.8, 8.2, and 8.6. And the consumption of peaches is in pounds per person per year. So the idea being that if a person makes $10,000 a year, that you would eat five pounds of peaches per year. Okay, and so forth all the way up. So here's my data set all entered. And then we're going to look at the data in the calculator. So hit Y equals, clear out anything you might have in here. If your plot's currently off, turn it back on. Mine got turned off because I'm using it for another class. Um, and then I want to actually look at the data set. Do you guys remember how to do that? Zoom 9. Good. If you're having trouble remembering the steps on how to do the problems, it probably means you haven't been doing enough of the problems. Because the more you do them, the more comfortable you get at that process. Why is this not linear and not exponential? It's concave down. Okay? And that's a good key, right? Because linear has no concavity. And what is exponential graphs? They're all concave up. Okay, so that's our reason. Why is the graph not linear exponential? Because it's concave down. And one of the two options for logarithmic, or log, I said that wrong. No, I didn't. Logarithmic, sorry, there's another function we're going to have later. Logarithmic graphs is that it can be concave down. So as we're looking at this, the reason on part A is because it's concave up. So the data set the points, the scatter plot, whatever phrasing you want, but the data set is concave up. I'm not saying it right. Down, am I? Concave down. There we go. I'm sorry. The data set is concave down. You guys told me to down, and I'm the one changing it. All right. Part B says that we're going to create the model for this. We already have it in the calculator. So we should be able to find the logarithmic model. So let's figure out where it is in the list of regression models. So back in my regular screen, if I hit stat, calc, I'm going to arrow down until I find ln reg, and it's number 9 on mine anyway. I think that it's 9 on all of yours. If I select that one, either mine pulls up like this, and I just tell it y1, or yours pulls up and you arrow down and you put Y1 later. This is what we have. So the A value is 5.005 .005, and the B value is 2.002. Yeah. All right, so our equation needs a name, f of x. It's a plus b to the x. The a was 5.005 plus, and the v, b value is 2.002 .002 natural log of x. So I haven't graded any of your models yet, but if you stop right here, your model's not complete, right? You've got a name, you've got an equation, those are two very good first steps, but it's incomplete. What comes next? The output, the peaches, right? So it's whatever really usually is in parentheses on your table, right? So pounds per person per year. And if you want to put of peaches, that's cool too. But we definitely need the pounds per person per year. And just because I want to put it here, I'm going to put of peaches. That's not crucial, but the other part is. And then we have to decide what? What x is. Okay? Where x is. And what is x? Yeah, it's the yearly income in tens of thousands of dollars. So you can almost just take it straight out of the table and write it down. So that's kind of cool where x is the yearly income, or the person's yearly income, if you want to be more precise. It's definitely not the peach's yearly income, right? 
person's yearly income, and tens of thousands of dollars. You absolutely have to have the tens of thousands of dollars. Because if you don't know that's how it's determined, you're not going to be able to actually put anything into your function with certainty that you did it right. Any questions on this? Yes, sir. Yes, we're going to put an interval next. Um, and our interval would be what? One to six, yes. One less than or equal to x, less than or equal to six. Okay, looks great. Does it have me do anything else with this one? It certainly does. It says, now to estimate the consumption of peaches for a person making $35,000 per year. So how do I do that? Plug it in. Okay, I need to plug it in and you want to use a table. What is it? What am I going to actually plug in? 3.5 because it represents the 35,000, right? So I called my function f, so I'm going to write f 3.5. And at this point, you don't have to actually show the plugging in part, okay? f of 3.5 tells me that that's what you're doing. So if you take your calculator and you go into your table, which is a great place to do that, and put in 3.5, mine says 7.5. 513. Is that what yours says? Excellent. 7.513 what? Pounds of peaches per person per year. Right. So this is pounds of peaches. The of peaches part you wouldn't have to absolutely have, but it's Kind of helps to clarify, pounds of peaches per person per year. Is that cool? We're all good with that. Part D says, according to the model, when will the consumption be 10 pounds per person per year? So what do I have to do for that part? Somebody said it. What was it? Yeah, so in our, in our graph, right? So what we want, notation to write down, is we want f of x to equal 10. So this is what you're going to write for me. And then what you're going to do to actually find that is to go back into your calculator. And in y2, you're going to put in 10. Like that. And we already had a window. I'm not sure that we're going to see it in this particular window because I think it's bigger than my value. So let me hit window and let's see what happens. Yeah, so my y max right now goes only to 9.2. And I need it to go above 10, so maybe you pick 11, 12, something like that. I'll put 12. And I also need then my x value to extend beyond 6.5 because I know at 6.5 it was only hitting about 9 point something. So maybe we have our x value go out to say 10. I'm guessing it may not look right, so we'll see. Here's a graph. Yeah, I didn't make it go out far enough, did I? So how do I fix that? Yeah, okay, so my window is not far enough out lengthwise, but it's plenty high, right? So I don't need to worry about the Y max. I just need to change my X max. And somebody suggested 15, so let's give that a shot and graph it. Oh, good. It crosses, yes? How do I find that spot? Yep, second trace, which is the calc menu, and it's option number five. Cool thing is, these two curves only cross once, and they're the only curves that are in my equations in y1 and y2. So when it asks me first curve, second curve, guess, I can just hit enter three times. I don't have to do anything. It's automatic. One, two, three, boom, I'm done. And it tells me the answer down here is 12.124. Because we're using three decimals. So x equals 12.124. And then as I'm looking at that, I need to figure out what in the world I have found. I mean, in terms of context in this particular problem. What is 12.124 as an x value in this problem? 
it's their income in tens of thousands. So this is tens of thousands of dollars. I'll just write it at the end. You could put the dollars in at the beginning if you want. Now, that's fine, and you can leave it that way, and that's totally cool. But does anybody know what that is in terms of the actual value here? How would I actually go about writing down a numerical value without having to write this weird tens of thousands thing at the end? Yeah, what did you do to get that? You just know. Okay, that's all right. You multiply it by, what do you think? 10,000. Yeah, if you take this number, 12.124, and you multiply it by 10,000, that's one with four zeros after it, right? Then you'll actually end up getting that this is $121,240. That's what it's looking like. Okay? Now, if you don't want to do that, it's okay. But if you're looking in the back of the book and you see an answer like that and you're like, well, how in the world did I get that? I have this weird 12.124 tens of thousands. Do I have the same answer? This is what they're doing. Okay? Cool? Well, you're not complaining, so I guess we'll say that you're cool. All right, I mentioned just a little bit ago, oh, I'm sorry, one more problem on this one. I was thinking we were already on the next one. This one says now, interchange the inputs and outputs in the table and write a model for the inverted data. Okay? So we're going to go back into our table and we're going to make the peaches the X value and the income the Y value, or the peaches L1 and the income L2. I'm going to clear out what's in here. I'm going to go back and do a zoom nine. What model is that? It's exponential. So when we inverted and we changed the inputs and the outputs, we switched to them, it went from being a logarithmic model to an exponential model. And if you do remember, and if you don't, it's okay, but if you do remember from algebra, that shouldn't be a surprise because logs and exponentials are inverses of each other. So this makes sense um, that this graph would look like this. All right, so we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to create an exponential model then. So we're going to do stat calc. It's option zero. And just for fun, we're going to graph it to make sure that we actually agree that it seems reasonable. And I don't think it could get any better than that. It fits very, very well. So our equation is, um, I'll give it a different name. I'll call it g of x, because we already had f of x in this particular problem. 0 0.082 times 1.645 to the x. This is the equation part of it, the name and the equation. <coughs> What's next? What's the output now? Tens of thousands of dollars. Where X is what? Yeah. The pounds of peaches per person per year. And what's manifold then? Yeah, 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 8.6. So if you happen to be the peach vendor, somehow you could sort of figure out how much money your customers make in a year. That'd be a lot of work. 
But that's what the model would tell you, right? If you knew how many pounds per person of peaches that that particular person ate per year, um, you could find out how much money, approximately, that they made. Okay? Unless you just don't like peaches, and then it just doesn't work at all, does it? You're right. All right. Um, I mentioned at the very beginning of this lesson that unless there's a good reason to do so, and really the only good reason to do so we've seen so far, um, with maybe one exception of your homework, is years. If the years are your input value, that we change them so that they're an abbreviated version because too big of inputs will freak your calculator out eventually. So we don't want to have the too big of inputs with the years. Well, this is the time where there's an exception because there's always exceptions to everything, right? It's just the nature of life. So the table gives the body weight of mice used in a drug experiment as recorded by the researcher. These are the age of the mice in, in weeks, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 weeks, and their weight in grams. And it says to find a log model for the mouse's weight, G, in terms of the age, A plus 2 weeks. And then this funny thing at the end tells you you're going to do something weird with the inputs. It says, align the age by subtracting 2 from each entry. So the very first thing that it's telling you is you're not going to enter 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. What are you going to do? You're going to enter them as 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Um, and it's really more a matter of the, the graph that it gives you is going to have a certain feel to it, a, a viewing to it. And if you input them the other way, it doesn't give you a very good model from the calculator. So this is sort of a technology um, limitation. That's why we're doing it. We have a technology limitation here. So take your calculator. You're going to enter the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. You're going to enter the weight in grams. And we're going to see what kind of model we have. Well, it tells us we're going to have a log model, but you're going to see it too. look like a log model? Yeah. If we actually enter this as 3, 5, 7, 9, and so forth, it looks like the same thing just shifted to the right a couple of units so that it makes a funny asymptote. I mean, like, it doesn't, it doesn't work very well with the technology to have the asymptote where it wants to be or where it should be. All right, so here's our graph, yeah? And we're going to find a log model. So that's stat calc number 9. Your A value is 11.298, and your B value is 7.372. Does everybody's A and B value match that? So far, so good? Okay. Now we have some weird things ahead of us because we did that weird alignment to it, but the first part is all good. It actually tells us that they want the input to be the letter A and the output to be G, so we're going to model it with the letters they told us to, so this will be G of A equals, not to confuse the issue, but the first A that our calculator gave us, that was, what was it? 298. Thank you. Plus, oops, 7.372. Natural log, and this is natural log of A. They're letting A be the input in place of X. That's all they're doing. A few places your book will do that. If you change it to X, it's not a huge deal. They do need to match with your description, though, here in a minute. All right, what is the output of this function? The weight in grams. So I'm going to write grams. You can write grams of weight. You can write grams for the weight of a mouse, but it needs to have at least the word grams in there. You yes? Need to add the plus two to a. You don't need to here. We're going to use it here in a second. Yeah, it's just going to be A right there. Okay, what is A, roughly speaking? It's the age of the mouse, right? But it's not exactly the age of the mouse. The age of the mouse is actually three weeks for the input of one. 
So what's the age of the mouse? It's a plus two, right? Where a plus two, this is why it's awkward, this is why we don't do it very much, it's weird, right? Is the age in weeks, we need that part, right? In weeks. of the mouse. And then I need an interval input for A. So what's our interval input for A? One to nine, one to nine right. So it's one less than or equal to A less than or equal to nine. It's strange, right? We can do it, but it feels awkward. I'll show you a graph here in a minute of what happens if we didn't do it so you can see why we don't like that. I don't think we, did we graph it? I didn't, did I? I'll show it to you here in a minute. Let's actually do part B first. Part B says, estimate the weight of the mouse when it is four weeks old. So here's where you gotta be careful. The mouse is four weeks old. What's my input for a four week old mouse? Two. Yeah, have to be careful. Is it two or is it six? You remember whether we're adding or subtracting. It's two. Two. So in our table, we plug in the number two, and we have 16.408. What? Grams. Grams. Very good. Now I want to show you why we did this weird interval input besides the fact that they just told us to. Usually there's a reason behind the told us to, right? I'm sure you guys never have that happen with your parents. They tell you to do something, there's actually a reason there? No, probably not. Probably never a reason. All right, so let's just graph it. So just hit graph, and you see that it fits pretty well. It's not perfect. You don't quite hit that last point and so forth, but it's, it's pretty good. So I want you to take a look at what happens then. Clear out the equation, or you can just watch me do it. It's fine. I'm going to change my inputs in my stat menu to the 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11 that they originally were. I'm going to recalculate the linear regression. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, but I don't think I did zoom 9. That's what's wrong. That's not real good, is it? I mean, it's not like the worst possible thing we could see, but the other one was a whole lot better. So do you see why they wanted you to do the alignment? Really, just because it was more accurate. But this is what happens if we hadn't done the alignment. Everybody good with that? Yes? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, unless it tells you to align the input differently, then you don't align the input, um, except for years. We're going to align the input with years because it just gets too big for the calculator to deal with. So we always align the input for years. We don't align it otherwise unless they tell us to. Yeah. Any other questions? 